everybody, uh, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody uh, is doing well. Uh, look, uh, this is a follow-up to a video I did late last night, and I want to do some clarifications and make some points. First announcement is those of you who paid attention, I temporarily suspended operations and programs and services at the Odyssey Project because, simply put, uh, we didn't have the funding, lack of funding, and I had been doing it and carrying it for years. And so I, I, my plan was to shut it down, and if nothing happened, shut it down for the rest of the year. Um, I can't do it. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do or how I'm going to make what happens happens, but what I do is needed, even if the people who can get behind me don't see it. And it seems like people see it, but they just don't get behind it. That's a whole other story. But anyway, we still need support. So uh, the way to support the work we do, if you follow me, you know what that is. If not, there's a link to take you to the site to show you. But we need uh, work. I mean, nothing points to it like what I'm about to talk about. Yesterday, well, last night late, Round six, I guess, I got uh, a link from one of my clients who happens to know what I do and supports what I do to a certain extent and says, hey, look, uh, you need to check this out. And it's a story of a young girl in Dallas, which has some affinity to me. I lived there for four and a half years. Um, and 21-year-old former high school basketball star beats a young man that the family says they consider a family friend and definitely someone she knew had eaten with and sat down and with so this wasn't strangers these were people who knew each other and she beat him in a bad game of basketball now anybody that understands basketball in the hood or understands basketball the way we play uh me and my brother go at it and there's not a dude on this planet i love more than i love him outside of my sons and we go at it it's no friends on the court you know we're not gonna harm each other but we out there to win and we talking noise so i'm assuming that it's some noise talk going on she's beating this dude she beats him he leads with his kids and his brother comes back and shoots her five times well he shoots and kills are definitely shot at least five times and got away last i checked they were still looking for him they had a five thousand dollar reward out now i talked about the fact that last night okay we need to get real about what's going on we need to stop pretending that that's not an issue we need to stop pretending that we don't see the prevalence in intimate partner violence in African-American adolescent and young adult male violence against one another, against others in the community, and especially against females and children. It's happening. Bar friends killing girlfriends, kids, uh, soon-to-be ex-husbands killing their own kids to get back at the wife. Bar friends killing uh, ex-husbands, killing ex-wives behind stuff. And um, let me be clear here. I've been studying this probably longer than some of you have been living. So no, I don't think that what happened on that basketball court was 100% about losing a basketball game. But he had reached what we would call his emotional threshold. You got a psychotic threshold, emotional threshold, and you, you, when you reach a psychotic threshold, you're gonna have a psychotic break. When you reach an emotional threshold, you're gonna do something explosively responsive to your emotions at the time and what we're getting is a lot of instability that comes from the lack of proper emotional development the lack of proper emotional maturity that comes from a lack of properly socializing them it comes from a lack of proper uh providing the right stability during developmental years and please believe i'm not making an excuse for what this dude did absolutely no excuse in the world and I don't ever want it to say that there's ever a reason or an excuse for us to harm one another. And definitely not for a man to harm a female or a child. Absolutely no reason whatsoever. We have to get... Look, there's, I don't know anybody 
in my circle that didn't have some challenges. Uh, I never knew my dad. Fortunately, I had my great grandfather, but that even creates issue. You talking about a dude that's your grandmother's dad raising you? That's so much that goes on that we miss because that's just not the connectivity. But fortunately enough, I leaned into him enough to where I picked up the tenets of manhood. I know what it means to hold things together no matter how it looks. I know what it means to sit up and not accept excuses. He was a son of a sharecropper, dropped out in the second grade, and yet still found a way to support his family, raise multiple generations in his home, and be there until the end when he died at 83 from leukemia. He set the standard for me. But what about all the kids that didn't? I've talked about this. I, I've read it about it. I've talked about it. We have to have something to fill in the gap. You got 1.5 million uh, missing black men. Again, no excuse, but you got to understand that emotionally unstable men aren't born just like emotionally strong men aren't born. You create them. You either create someone who's going to have emotional stability, be able to grow into emotional intelligence, emotional immaturity, be able to make decisions, be able to experience their emotions without being led by them. That's supposed to be some of the most powerful and foundational principles and standards and guidelines that manhood should be rest on. Yes, I have uh, the ability to feel emotions just like women, but I can't be led by them. I have to be trusted to be able to put my emotions aside and make the decision that's gonna be best for me, my family, my community, my race, my country, whatever, on down the line. So again, you know, people talking about, you know, what, why is she challenging him to a game of basketball? And, you know, I mean, we've got to stop making excuses uh, because there's absolutely nothing that a woman's going to do to make me shoot her unless she's got a gun and my life is in jeopardy. Then we're not even talking about the same thing. We're talking about self-preservation, always the number one rule. What we're talking about is bruised egos, abandonment issues, the inability to process rejection. All of these things are leading to a heightened level of violence from our young adult, uh, uh, our adolescents and young adult males who are turning on the community, uh, whether it's themselves. Uh, to me, a black life is a black life, but definitely there's something as a man that bothers me when I see a man harm a woman. Sorry, just built that way. And trust me, I've had some women do some pretty hurtful things to me, but I'm never going to be that dude. I'm never going to be the person that's going to sit up and think I'm justified at harming a woman. There's something just innately in me that says, if you're that bad for me and I can't protect you without the fear or the concern of you doing something to me, I, don't, I, I will not be around you, but I'm not going to harm you. I'm not going to take out my frustrations, my angers, my disappointments on you. Because deep down inside, I'm designed and I'm built to protect you. Even when you don't deserve protecting, I'll just simply move away from you, get away from you, do what I've got to do. And this isn't about one particular situation. I'm talking about women, period. You've got to be built a certain way. And we haven't built our young men. And it's showing up in the way they're handling situations. And no one else is going to fix this problem. No one else is going to fix this problem. Did you know what? What that did is create another situation that's going to influence the level of trust we have for one another along gender lines. It's going to take another life off the street. It's, it already took one life off the street. It's going to take another life off the street when they catch him. He's going to prison uh, for a very long time. And that is going to be a devastated family he's got obviously got children had multiple children had them at the uh, court with him when all this went down he's got that they're going to be without a father that's going to have to be a situation where that's dealt with and worked on or it's going to be another problem and this is something that we are not effectively managing i've talked to you about the importance of racial socialization. I've talked to you about the importance of holistically educating our children, about preparing them before we ever unleash, uh, release them into a world that's inherently hostile to them. I've shown you that racial socialization has the ability, one of, how, how I got into being so engaged in a, uh, 
invested in racial socialization was me studying how to address African-American adolescent and young adult male violence. Where is it coming from? Why are they so hostile? Why are they hurting each other? Why are they hurting themselves? Why are they simply throwing their lives away? And, and there are a number of issues, five primary issues, uh, urban hassle, uh, being uh, victims of violence, witnessing violence, um, lack of proper racial socialization, and the number one cause, feeling of being disrespected. Sound familiar? The problem is, without proper racial socialization, they don't know how to process that, that feeling of being disrespected. They go from zero to 100. Because in, in their environment, in their world, that's, what, that, that's acceptable. You disrespect me, I'll kill you. And so we've got to be able to do a better job. Look, uh, I'm going to be talking about this for a while. Uh, again, uh, the announcement is the Odyssey Project is back up and running. Um, I don't exactly know what the long term plan is going to be, but we have to do something. I can't sit by and just know the answer, literally have the program and sit up and, and, and let my frustrations and emotions put me in a situation where I let kids that I can help fall through the crack. Where I, help, where I let young men who I can help fall through the crack. So this is going to be my commitment. And I'm going to ask you guys to support the work I do. With that being said, look, I'm going to jump off of here. I got some things to do. I'm going to be working. But we're going to be talking about this because this isn't an anomaly. This is happening way too often. These things land on my desk weekly. This is just the latest one. We've got a problem, and ignoring it is not the solution. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable.